I think the, the next question for for um, for myself um, and, and particularly perhaps some of the, the business we have um, worked with over um, this this period with uh, Australian Australian government, a lot of it is is predominantly focused on technology businesses looking to expand here, um, mm -hmm. and with that comes obviously lots of information, lots of data. Um, but also sort of the uh, move to SaaS and the cloud, et cetera. So in terms of um, ensuring that data transfers between the UK and Australia comply with the UK law, what, what should we be looking for? How can that be done? Yeah. So unfortunately, Australia is not one of the countries that has been given adequacy. So what, what that means is that the, uh, the EU uh, believes that it has the gold standard of data protection. And so it looks at all of the other countries and says, are their laws equivalent or better? And, and there aren't really any better ones, but they, are they equivalent? Are they adequate to ensure the safety and security of our data subjects, the data subjects within the EU personal data? Um, and so Europe, before Brexit, the EU had um, granted 13 different countries adequacy. Um, Australia is sadly not one of them. Um, and the UK after Brexit adopted um, the same adequacy decisions. So again, Australia not part of that. And there's we, we've also approved South Korea, but um, uh, yeah, not sadly not Australia. So and um, what that means is that there is a general prohibition on transferring personal data overseas unless you can fall within you know one of the exemptions. And and, and the main one here is that there is the um, necessary contractual protection. So what effectively they're saying is Australian law isn't sufficient in itself. So there needs to be a contractual um, agreement that the, um, uh, the, the the transferring entity and the receiving entity will adhere to this certain standard of data protection. So post Brexit, what you need to put in place there is what's called an international data transfer agreement. Um, and um, also, you would need to do a transfer risk assessment, uh, which is all about, um, you know, uh, as, as the name suggests, assessing the risks of the transfer. And both of those are documents that you can obtain from the ICO's website. Um, the International Data Transfer Agreement is, is pretty standard document. You can't change it. Um, that's part of the rules. It is. It's like that's the approved document. You have to fill in the relevant bits about the data. Um, get it signed and also do the the transfer risk assessment. And once you've done that, then you can proceed with the um, international transfer. Brilliant, brilliant. 